WWE might have just done the only thing they could have done to get me to log back into the product, to get me to say I'm gonna watch every Monday or Friday or whenever this particular person is on the show because they've made the right decision and for some reason, even after all the shit this specific talent has gone through over the years to say, you're not good enough, you're not the guy, he decided, I'm gonna lace the WWE boots back up again. I'm gonna put my big boy pants on and I'm gonna go take what I should have got all those years ago and for me, this is a storyline that you couldn't write any better. It could be iconic, it could be classic, it could be one of the best runs in WWE, in wrestling, professional wrestling history, Cody Rhodes back in the WWE. Hey, no Ridge the comic here, right now we're just gonna be talking about WrestleMania this year. As with last year, was set over two days. This way, you know, WWE makes even more money, double the money on the gate receipts at least. And it was a very, very electrifying show. It was bombastic. It was a scatter shot. There were some incredible matches, some really, really, really bad matches. And I won't talk about the bad ones. If I don't talk about a match in this review, it means it's really bad or not worth talking about. Plus, I don't have enough time, to be honest, to talk about every single match. I'll be here for three hours. I don't have three hours. I have about Nine minutes, maybe 12. But I'll start off with the big one, all right? Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. And this match, even though it was meant to be a secret, has been known to the public for the last month, all right? It's just how it is. There have been rumors about Cody leaving AEW, and that was a big story in and of itself because, wait, he went and started that company. Competition breeds competition breeds competition, and it just makes everyone better. The weak will fall. The great will rise up and thankfully I do feel AEW doing what it's done has improved WWE's product. Well, at least now they know what they're doing with Roman Reigns, whereas three or four years ago it was still an utter shit show. But Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins, when that music struck, when that line came out, there's more than one royal family in wrestling. You know, that, that line, it was, wait, they're allowing him to use this music. It's a great track, don't get me wrong. When he started playing at AEW, it was wow. That's a big F you to WWE. And then, he, and then he played it at WrestleMania on his return. And I just sat there shocked, like, whoa, my guy, how did you manage to get this through? How did they allow you to use that? Knowing what that song means to you and what it means to WWE. And my only thought was, they're gonna use that angle that the Rhodes family has been dealing with for the last 40 years, 30 years, and that's gonna be one of the most amazing screw job storylines of all time. I can see it, it's full circle, and at the end of it, Cody's gonna get the big one. He's gonna get a world title. He's someone who deserved it the first time round. He left for the right reasons because he didn't believe he was being served by the company, and he was 100% right. At the time, he was one of the best talent in the world. He went on to become the best talent, in my opinion, in the world. He's one of the best wrestlers of all time, underappreciated at WWE, underutilized when he was there the first time round. And for me, it's one of the reasons I stopped watching the product. When he left was basically the time I stopped engaging week to week with all the shows, pre-shows, post-shows, all of it. I kind of just put it on hold while still logging in to see specifically what's going on. If there's a big event, SummerSlam, WrestleMania, I'll check up on highlights, but I won't really watch. And I think the only reason Cody Rhodes would come back is if he was assured that he's going to get a run at one of the titles or he's going to get it for a long time. And if that's the case, generally, I don't like these types of deals. But in this instance, I want it. I want it now. I want Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes to have a huge year-long feud. It could be epic. It could be the best thing on WWE for the last 10 years. It could be the best thing since The Rock came back to WWE in 2012, 2011, and that whole fiasco with John Cena. It could be epic. So, I will say that match stole the entire weekend. My only issue with the match, other than it being practically perfect, was the fact that the kickouts were pretty poor. I don't know why I didn't buy, or maybe more aptly, they didn't sell the kickouts very well when it came to the two counts or even the one counts. It just could have been done better. I didn't really believe it. Even though the whole match was great, the bits were great, the spots were great, the tension was amazing. The kickouts, they were, they were a little weak. So I'd give that a four and a half out of five stars. 
could have been just that tiny bit better, but it definitely stole the weekend. On the other notes I have, Pat McAfee, he looked like a damn natural in the ring. I don't like the guy that much. I like his commentary when I hear it on memes and stuff, but you know, he's a bit of a tosser. Nothing wrong with that, we're all tossers, but I have to give him props where he deserves props. He looked so comfortable and calm in the ring. His facial expressions, great. It was novel. It was like, I can't believe I'm here. It did feel like the everyman getting in the ring, even though he's like a past NFL player. He is an athlete himself, but when he was doing the things he was doing in the ring, I actually couldn't believe it. It was an amazing moment for him, an amazing moment for WWE, and I think he should be in the ring more often. Logan Paul, however, not as good. Not bad, to be fair, not bad. But when you compare him to Pat McAfee in this case, I mean, Logan Paul looked very odd, gangly, and out of place in the ring. Now, I will say it wasn't the worst match of the night. It wasn't the worst match of the weekend by far. So there's a positive, but I do think it could have been done better. At the same time, he's not been wrestling for a long time. And I have to think to myself, if I was in that ring, would I have done any better? Probably not. So in that case, I have to give him props, say, well done, you represented the YouTube community pretty well, and uh, I salute you, my brother. My brother in YouTube is what it has to be. You know, you have to support the lads, support the boys, and when someone does something that is great, and that is great being involved at WrestleMania, you have to tip your hat. So, good job. Oh yeah, the Steve Austin and Kevin Owens moment. It was trashy, it was wacky, it is everything great about WWE, all in one moment, and that was what was going on at the end of the first night. I'll tell you, Stevie, Austin, he had a buzz on at the end. It was a very, very big buzz. He was going crazy with the beer. I think he may have had a bit too much, to be fair. And then in the second night, <laughs> after Pat McAfee had had his way with Austin Theory, Mr. McMahon comes out, <laughs> has a match with Pat McAfee. After he's had his first match, does him in, and then, and then Steve Austin comes out and says, I'm gonna stun Vince McMahon for one last time. And after you give it to Vince, it was one of the worst received stunners I've ever seen. But the fact the man is willing to put his body on the line at the age he is, and he still looks pumped. He's using shit, I know that. But the fact he's still willing to do it, it warms my heart. He is committed to his product. He's committed to what's going on in the wrestling world. And for that, I mean, you have my highest respect, Mr. McMahon. You still look a bit wacky, and I was worried when I thought your knee buckled, but other than that, um, good job. You know you're an adult when you're writing your WrestleMania notes on your car insurance policy documents. So yes, I'm adulting very well, but thankfully with all this, I'm almost at the end of this review. The RK Bro triple threat tag match was one of the best matches of the weekend. I think the pops that were going on, the Randy moments, the Riddle moments, they will stand out for quite a long time and I really like the synergy they have whenever I see little clips of them. They have great rapport and I think Randy has actually managed to evolve his character more than I've seen him do in many, many years. And the fact that he's willing to go down this more comedic path with it without making it feel gimmicky is really impressive. So I have to give it to him. Riddle is a great guy to bat off of for him. I don't think he would work with a lot of wrestlers because I'm sure he would piss a lot of people off, but I think with Randy, it's almost like you've got the perfect fit there of the seriousness and the lax comedy, which just brings out this humanness, which is great to watch. As long as Randy wants to do it, that team will go on, and I think it might go on for a very long time. Before we end it with the Brock and Roman scenario, we'll go with Belair versus Lynch. Definitely the best women's match of the night. The tag match was a bit blah. Ronda Rousey versus Flair, nah. This was actually a solid match, and I do think both of them are very good workers. And while we all love Becky Lynch as the man, I think that everyone in the wrestling community can agree that what WWE did to Bianca Belair when Becky just took the title from her in one of the most ridiculous ways I've seen in many, many years, probably since Sheamus took the World Heavyweight title from Daniel Bryan. Since then, I've not seen anything like it. One of the worst creative decisions they've made in a very long time. But, thankfully, they made it come around, and they did the right thing, and Bianca got the win. And for that, I think we can all say we've buried the hatchet. It's done. It's dusted. And now on to Brock versus Roman, and this one will indeed be short. Even though the match was surprisingly long for what it was, I thought this would be done in four minutes, and that would be it. Because it's Brock and, and Roman. But... It lasted a lot longer than I think any of us believed it to, and it was a flip book of finishers for like 15 minutes or more. 
it kept going and kept going. Roman just kept on spearing. Brock kept on trying to do F5s. Roman just kept on giving Superman punches. German suplexes were handed out all over the place. And at the end of it, Brock lost. Not what I wanted to have because for me, this is the best Brock Lesnar I've seen in my life. It's the best. He's actually got character. It's not just a big brute guy. And because of that, everyone bought into him. Everyone wanted him to win. I really believe that because you actually saw a bit of his personality. When his voice breaks, when he's saying, Brock Lesnar, it's crazy. People go nuts for it. With him doing his own promo, you're getting this idea of what really makes him tick. But with the match, I think it was a solid match. Probably three and a half out of five. Nothing great, nothing that memorable. But I do think at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar has cemented himself as one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. I think it would have been better for him to win this match and Roman come through with a feud with Cody and then circle back to Brock. But if you're going to make Cody in the long term an opponent to the Universal Champion, the WWE Champion, it's an easier sell if that's Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. So if that's the case, I get why they've done it. And if Cody is going to get the push, then I'm 100% behind it. But I think in this individual case, I would have preferred Brock Lesnar winning. Roman Reigns done a great job with this character of the high table and all that. But yeah, I am intrigued to see where WWE goes with these big storylines. I think there could be an incredible screw job story with Cody Rhodes and his family. The fact that they've never had a world title, even though they are one of the royal families of wrestling. And if you saw Cody's backstage interview, I mean, it was real, raw, heavy, and he meant every word of it. And I do believe, he believes, as I believe, he is one of the best, if not the best wrestler in the world. He has everything. He has a look. He has charisma. He has charm. He has the ability. He has the athleticism. And I really hope it's his time. So, WrestleMania, good job. Could have been better. Could have been worse. I'll give you 3.75 out of 5. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, Cody Rhodes himself gonna come after you you don't want that no you really don't so just subscribe anyway so boy then i've been narendra the comic you've been grow we'll see you next time that's tomorrow if you don't know make a video every single day been doing it every day for over 1000 days now we ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers so do subscribe pop back again tomorrow for some more quality shitty content so hashtag never no hitch tag goes also bring the pukwas pukwas means nonsense and punjabi we also bring that. Bring a lot. Bring a little. Do a lot. Do a little. But we do indeed bring the quality shitty content on a daily basis. So see you tomorrow. More of the same. Slightly different. But essentially the very same. Once more. See you then. Skadoosh. <laughs>